When I first saw Rain's body rolls and how it made me feel, I knew they had something. Today we're talking about K-pop and that's short for Korean pop and it's taking the world by storm and I'm personally convinced of this because the dedicated K-pop stores in my area survived the pandemic. My local TGIF couldn't even survive the pandemic because we have beautiful boys and handsome girls with skin so impossibly smooth with dance moves that have infested even my four-year-old's brain. These 20-somethings that look like teenagers and then you got the 30-somethings that look like teenagers. They appear to have it all. Looks, money, and fame. But I'm here to tell you Behind the glitz and the glamour of the K-pop world, if you're the chosen few to become what the Koreans call idols, you'll learn that there are many, many strings attached. And we're going to delve into the world of K-pop and explore the life of one of their idols named Sully, a beautiful young woman who through the love of performing and sheer determination found herself smack dab in the K-pop scene. Though, once she was inside, she realized that she was never about the money or the fame. Her journey was basically about seeking happiness. And when she tried to cut those ties that kept her from achieving that happiness, a tragedy would unfold in 2019 that shook the entire K-pop industry and South Korea as a whole. Now, I'd be the first to tell you that I have no clue about K-pop. But I have a valuable resource in DD Riley, a friend of the channel as well as a gifted writer, but most importantly for this video, a K-pop fan for the past eight years. My name is Monks, and I had dreams once to be the first Cambodian rapper. I even named myself C-Rap. I wonder why that didn't work out. <sighs> a slim figure, V-shaped faces, double eyelids, high bridge pointed noses, plump lips and pale skin. If you have all these qualities, you possibly could be qualified to be a K-pop idol. Being Korean might help as well. These are just a few of the many, many standards cemented by the netizens of South Korea. And K-pop idols such as Irene from Red Velvet, Jisoo from Blackpink, IU and Yuna from SNSD would be considered to have set the bar on these beauty standards. And because we the public are guilty of glorifying their persona, we forget sometimes that they're still human at the end of it all. Now for the male K-pop idols, the standards are the same. The slimmer, the better. Now remember, these aren't just specific to K-pop idols. This can be said of any celebrity in South Korea. You want that dewy skin, you want those large eyes, and you want something called a small face. So I turned to Google on what Koreans think a small face is, and I get some jargon about body proportions being well balanced, and then it shows me a picture as an example, and I look at it and I go, okay, now it all makes sense. They like small heads. Now, given this rigid checklist, it's no surprise that in South Korea, 25% of women between the ages of 19 through 29 have undergone some form of cosmetic surgery or another making South Korea the plastic surgery capital of the world. Now, common procedures are blepharoplasty, which is the cutting of the eyelids to get the double eyelids to get them big eyes, rhinoplasty for a much slimmer nose and skin whitening, the side effects of which are low blood pressure, rashes, and nausea, which doesn't seem to be worth it for most of us, but it's worth it to some who pay them bills with that face. And we've only touched the physical beauty aspect of this industry, but do you also have what it takes to withstand the grueling military style programs they have set up for the aspiring K-pop idol. Now, when we think about being discovered here in the West, we could imagine someone grabbing the guitar and singing their hearts out in some unknown club, hoping that the right person sees them and gives them their big break or putting themselves up on TikTok. But in Korea, it is a bit different because being a K-pop star is so, so coveted that institutions have been created for the sole purpose of turning you into the next malnourished K-pop star.
Now, the industry itself has created these programs. If you read between the lines, the record labels have basically constructed a breeding ground for new idols. But not only that, you have to pay them for the privilege of making them rich. It sounds like a bit like actual college. How does paying an estimated $50,000 a year sound to you? But guys, come on close. On the low, if you pass the eye test, okay? Say, if you're built different like Kim Tae Young of BTS, it's been known that the record label will give you a full scholarship. When you become a trainee, you live at the institution with the others. The only times that you are permitted to leave is when you have to attend something like regular school or something very important, okay? You wake up at 5 a.m. You do as your instructor tells you throughout the day and sometimes you're never gonna see your bed again until midnight or even way past midnight. It's designed to be excruciating because hey, it's designed to find the next K-pop idol and that's no joke. Your social life, What social life? You got no phones, no dating, your life is training and sleeping, and your parents can't even save you now without permission from the school. And don't even think about getting chubby, okay? A limited diet and excessive exercise is demanded because you don't want to be overweight at the weekly weigh-in. They got that too. And the harsh reality of it all is, like any competitive industry, the majority of trainees will go home at the end of the course empty-handed and likely spending the next few years of their lives paying off this heavy debt. Now, with all this being said, let's go ahead and meet a lovely young woman that endured all facets of this industry and came out on the other end as one of the few K-pop idols. In Busan, South Korea, a baby girl named Choi Jin Ri came into the world on March 29th of 1994 and from a young age she harbored dreams of stepping into this limelight driven by some natural desire to become an actress at 10 years old while in fourth grade she traveled by herself to seoul and if you need a perspective on that that's 325 kilometers just a little over 200 miles to enroll in a theater school where she would hone in on her dancing singing and acting she would also feel compelled to detach herself from her birth name which she deemed too christian thus in 2005 she decided on a new name sully at just 11 years old sully made her debut appearance on the sbs drama ballad of seodong where she portrayed the young shut up where she portrayed the young royal princess Sun Hua. In the subsequent year, Sully graced various productions, making guest appearances in shows like Love Needs a Miracle and Drama City in 2007. She would go on to feature in other independent films showcasing her versatility in projects such as Punch Lady and B.A.B.O. On September 1st of 2009, at just 15 years old, Sully's fame skyrocketed when she joined the ranks of the highly acclaimed girl group FX under SM Entertainment alongside current members Amber, Crystal, Victoria, and Luna. On September 5th, FX marked their debut on NBC's Music Corps, and it was during this time that they had the opportunity to share the stage with Girls' Generation, a group that lived up to their name and served as trailblazers for the K-pop genre, propelling it into the global mainstream and opening doors to international recognition. So after four chaotic but successful years, by 2013, the fame surrounding Sully began to cast a bit of a shadow, a dark shadow, because speculations arose that she was in a relationship with a rapper from the group Dynamic Duo, and this guy was named Choiza, and Choiza was actually his stage name, and it was short for Choi, it was short for Choi Gang Zazi, which means greatest penis. Now, it's understandable that the fans would cringe at the thought that their innocent, precious Sully would be well sullied by a dude named Greatest Penis. But the wave of backlash from the fans, especially male fans who prefer to envision Sully to be pure and single, it got out of control. Initially, a record label denied the relationship, but the media was relentless with accusations, even going as far as spreading false rumors 
of Sully's pregnancy. Sully played into this narrative. She wasn't defined by what a few gossip mongers were spreading. Now, in one particular instance, Sully would find herself in a rather heated debate, the center of a heated debate, when she posted a photo on her social media and she was wearing a long sleeve mint shirt with a caption that simply read, Winter, don't come, with a lot of exclamation points. Now, the issue here was that she wasn't wearing a bra. She would then go on to post multiple pictures of herself bra which had the netizens fuming. They flooded her with negative comments like, this girl is fucking crazy, or no bra, I can see your nipples. Along with other hateful comments that were not even related to this particular photo, but those hateful comments would leak into her other regular photos, such as she's a slut and Sully is a sex addict now. So basically Sully's refusal to conform to the societal norm and her outspokenness basically made her a target, pretty much a black sheep against societal expectations in South Korea. Much as she tried not to allow those words to affect her, this would still mark a turning point as the intense scrutiny and judgment intensified and began to infiltrate her life. Andrew Yoonji Kim, a professor of international studies at Korea University, highlighted the harsh judgment placed on women who dare to challenge these norms, stating, the fact that Sully was singled out for speaking her mind was really terrible. But these detractors were simultaneously met by her fans that actually loved her and they backed her up. They would say things like, I love you, Jinri. Do whatever you want to do. And Jinri, you look so happy, so I'm happy. Now, when Dee Dee Riley wrote this part, when I read it, I go, okay, this looks too smart for anything I might say. Amidst the cacophony of disapproval, Sully refused to back down. She fiercely defended her right to choose how she presented herself, asserting her belief in personal freedom and individual expression. Sully's decision to go brawless was an assertion of her autonomy and a challenge to the rigid standards imposed upon women in the industry. I could have easily just read it and said, oh my God, I'm so smart, you think I'm smart. Then came 2014, which was a really bad year for Sully because dating, is prohibited in the K-pop industry, and at this time, she was only 20 years old. And uh, Choiza, you remember Choiza, right? The, he was 34 already. That's 14 years older than she was. The relationship was seen as a betrayal in the eyes of the industry. They Because it, it's affecting their money, right? Let's just get to brass tacks. But she was in love. And she wanted her dearest fans to know about it, even though posting pictures of them kissing, going out on dates, outraged the netizens. She was boldly challenging their conservative values that are typically placed on idols. Now, as strong as she was, and she was very strong, as you will come to find out, she couldn't help but feel that she let people down. You know, she was a people pleaser. So... A year later, at 21, Sully felt that she had done all she needed to do in the K-pop industry, and her first love started tugging at her heart again, and that was acting. So she broke the sad news to the public that she was leaving the group to focus on her acting career, and surprisingly, was met by unconditional support from the members of FX. Like, when the industry wasn't speaking for them, these girls were actually very loving and supportive to Sully, which is very heartwarming because of all the hate that Sully was going through, she needed a W. And needless to say, it made her departure less painful, and she knew that she had made the right decision. Now, Sully kept a diary. Now, within it, she expressed her deepest affections for Choiza, writing, and it, it's really touching to read. When I was reading it, I... And hopefully I can do justice by reading it properly, okay? So she wrote, I'm happy because I feel like we found something else we could do together. I don't need anything else. No matter what happens later or what people say, I'm really happy right now. I'm so happy that I don't want to miss any of the emotions I'm feeling. I want to remember them all and I want to feel even the smallest things. And although they fought to be together, 
their careers, their schedules, it, they just didn't align as they would have wanted. And the pair eventually separated after dating for two years. And that would happen in 2017. Now, Sully, however, did have a special friend that stuck by her through all this suffering, this torment, this hate. And that was a girl named Guhara. And she was three years older and every bit of a big sister for Sully. Now, Guhara was also part of a popular girl group named Kara. Just know that they were more like family than friends and they would spend the majority of their time together. Now, they often shared selfies together on social media and there's just no doubting. When you see these images, uh, their close bond between these two women. Now, but Guhara, she too was not being treated very well by the netizens either. And she was being cyber bullied and even harassment. So Guhara would make headlines herself. And when she took her ex-boyfriend to court, it was messy. He had accused her of assaulting him. And Guhara made accusations of him threatening to release a sex tape, okay? Now, he would lose this case. He was sentenced to one and a half years in prison for coercion, assault, blackmail, whatever. However, his term was suspended and the trial, it still awaits to this day. Journalist and writer Park Hee-A said that female celebrities are chained to the societal standards of femininity, saying some female idol members have gotten ostracized for not smiling in a television show and reading a book about feminism that contradicts male-dominated patriarchal South Korean society. Now, expectations of purity and chastity govern women in South Korea. Guhara faced a barrage of hateful comments following media reports about this alleged sex video. Despite her being the victim of this twisted revenge porn thing that that man was doing. Now, in America... We saw firsthand that a sex tape could bring you money and fame. It's twisted, I know. And we all know who I'm talking about. Now, it's much different in South Korea where sex is kind of taboo. A very visceral reaction erupted at the sound of it. And it was because of this experience of how toxic social media could be. She was able to use that to help Sully, her best friend, navigate through the landmine, so to speak. I'd like to stress that Sully's influence on the K-pop scene was heavily influenced by her record label, SM Entertainment. They tried to mold her to fit their prescribed girl crush image, but when she received backlash from the public, she would also get reprimanded by her label as well. And we should not lose the magnitude of being berated by the two major components of being a pop star. It's like a child being berated by both parents at the same time. On her 23rd birthday, a moment of celebration, Sully shared a brief, innocent peck on the lips with her good friend, of course, that would be Guhara. Now, this act ignited a storm of negative reactions from the netizens. They berated, attacked, blasted Sully, making derogatory comments such as, they got nothing to do and just want attention. Or, what, now they're lesbians? Hara's out of her mind. Now, despite the fact that close female friends share innocent kisses like this all the time, if it was another girl from another girl group doing this, I assume the netizens wouldn't have much of a problem. But the internet's distaste of Sully at this time found a way to twist the narrative into something negative, and Sully would find that her defensive walls were becoming vulnerable and the targeted cyberbullying was beginning to get to her. But Sully stayed true to herself and remained outspoken and unapologetic as she's always been. She celebrated when South Korea legalized abortion and she wrote a caption that said, abortion is abolished. Glorious day with an exclamation point. Give every woman choice. Now, typically, K-pop idols aren't supposed to express their political views as a sign of respect to their fans and their members. But Sally spoke out about this, and given Korea's vast Christian community, this did not go down very well. And unfortunately, Sully faced even more relentless online attacks from trolls that deem her actions controversial. Even seemingly innocent acts like Posting pictures with her boyfriend became topics of controversy. 
Now, Sully's critics found fault with various aspects of her life for simply being different. And that's it. Every single day of her life for the past few years at this point, people were bombarding her with hate that it's no wonder that her mental health would suffer and got to a point now that she was dealing with depression. Now, on top of all these controversies surrounding her, they would ultimately compare her to Kim Kardashian. Now, everything that I've told you about her, her journey, her life, even that little excerpt that I read for you from her diary, you know, gives you a sense of who she is. And that comparison, we know, is a bunch of horseshit. Now, there's a stark contrast between these two women. If you know them enough, and I don't have to explain any further. And I'm telling you, every little move of hers was cross-examined. After starring in a movie in 2017 called Real, she played the role of a rehab therapist who was addicted to narcotics. Her acting was so convincing to the people, they began to speculate that she was actually using drugs under the influence while shooting the scene. They simply wrote off her exceptional acting, her years of dedicating herself to honing her craft, her love of acting, out the window, just because they felt that she was on drugs. And I'm not even sure how to stress this enough, okay? Because the hate, it got so bad. And this is the part that I have to think hurt her the most, okay? Because the people closest to her they started buying in to all these rumors and they started abandoning her like rats on a sinking ship. She felt like there was no one out there who understood her besides Guhara, who stuck by her side. If she posted a picture of herself lying in a bed, her comments would look something like, oh, now you want to get naked so bad, right? Who does this? Who takes pictures like this? Who posts these kinds of things? Her haters told her that she deserved every bit of pain, every bit of hate, every last drop of criticism that she received from them. And of course, this deepened her depression. It was like digging a knife further into the wound. Now, I get the impression that it's really challenging for K-pop stars to seek professional help for depression because we're talking about a country where people tend to believe that psychiatric disorders can be treated with one's will. In 2019, Sully's now 25, she releases a song titled Goblin. And just by paying attention to the lyrics, you can spot the cryptic message that may have given an insight as to what Sully was feeling. Don't be afraid of the cat without fur. Don't be afraid, just wanna tell you hi. The concept of the music video was a girl with dissociative identity disorder. And in the beginning of the music video, we can see the character she is portraying talking about them. Then with her face in the palm of her hand, she ponders about where they came from saying, is it because of stress or I don't know. Sometimes I wonder if they really are me. So who am I really? Did I do something wrong? I just want to end it. That's what I think sometimes. Now, could these words potentially indicate the inner turmoil that she was experiencing, including the pressures to conform, the online hate she endured and being placed pretty much under a microscope? This may have caused her to question her own authenticity, her sense of self. And as the song reaches its conclusions, she reflects on her experiences, stating, Now I can understand her. She just wanted to say hi. Would it be better for everyone to disappear? Now these lyrics, they convey a sense of isolation and longing for freedom from the torture that was public scrutiny. In a live interview in January of 2019, Sully openly expressed her remorse for the impact her actions had on her friends as they would face criticism on her behalf. They were catching strays, so to speak. Now, anyone who was associated with Sully, they weren't spared at all. And in the same breath, she would plead with reporters and viewers alike to treat her with kindness. Okay, concluding heartfelt words and what sounded like a defeating laugh. But in Sully fashion, she gave a bright smile, then made a finger heart 
raising it to the camera and said, I love you. And so the next time the public would actually see Sully would be on her Instagram live. She was just sitting in her bedroom and she was just staring into the camera. There was a noticeable despair about her, a sadness in her eyes. And she would just ask the viewers why they were being so mean to her and talking badly about her. She made a plea to them and told them, I'm not a bad person. She stared into her phone as the stream of people's comments scrolled away and any positive comments were nullified by even more negative ones and she would cut out. But then she would go on Instagram live again and for seven long minutes, she just stared into the camera. She had no words to say. She recorded herself resting her head on her pillow, closing her eyes, smiling, jamming to a song called Harlem River, My Moon, My Man. She played various other songs and after this, mouthing the lyrics and even singing out loud at times, but the majority of the time she was mute, silent, and we could only fathom what she was feeling, the heaviest yet emptiest feelings imaginable. This, unfortunately, was her goodbye to the fans and to those who loved her for who she really was, the real Sully. She was saying goodbye to the world and um, her last words were, what did I do to deserve this? She asked and that's, that's what we'd all love to know. Now, before we continue this story, if this hits a bit close to home, if you're having similar thoughts, in the United States, contact 988 Lifeline, which provides 24-7 confidential support to people in suicidal crisis or mental health-related distress. Now, by calling or texting 988, you'll be connected to mental health professionals with the Lifeline network. Now, in the description, the first thing you're going to find is a link that has compiled every suicidal hotline from around the globe, talking to someone who understands and will listen before you make any rash decisions might make all the difference in the world. On October 14th of 2019, Sully was found by her brother, who was also her manager, dead on the second floor of her house. The police of Seongnam Sujong suspected no foul play or any signs of a break-in. They could tell that she had tragically taken her own life by hanging herself. Now, during an autopsy on October 15th, it was revealed that she likely ended her life on the night of the 13th or the morning of the 14th. Nevertheless, her fans, her friends, her family were devastated. Her online haters were soon questioned for why they shamelessly decided to harass and chastise an innocent woman for simply doing what made her happy. I mean, seriously, guys, if you don't like what you see, go ahead and scroll. They put an X button up there so you can get out of there. The sheer heartlessness of these faceless jerks is nauseating, okay? This gives me flashbacks to the case of Hannah Kimura. Now, when you give everyone a voice, like social media does, it can be a democracy of constructive criticism. And along with that, a ton of idiots can also be heard as well. One hater reportedly said, you know, if this was from 10 weeks ago, I would have apologized a hundred times, but I left this over a hundred weeks ago. What am I supposed to do if you want to bring it up now? One commenter was confronted as to why he chose to leave their unwanted opinions on Sully's Instagram. Their response, what, are you a fan or something? My comment wasn't even for you, deflection at its finest. A common tactic used by those that don't even have two cents of original thoughts to rub together. But I digress. Idols taking their own lives is not that uncommon as you may think. And I may butcher a few names here, so just please forgive me. In 2007, Lee Hai Ryun, known as Yu Ni, passed away at age 25, where she also hung herself. In 2008, Choi Jin Sil met the same fate at 39 years old and was a main vocalist. Kim Jong-yun, 
from the popular boy band Shiny took his own life at age 27 by carbon monoxide poisoning. Jung Che Yul, a 26 year old actress, was also found dead in her home. Now, take a moment to let that sink in. A common theme present in all these deaths is the fact that they all suffered from depression. Mental health is often tested but neglected in K-pop. And this is largely due to the overwhelming demands of the industry and the lofty expectations of that toxic fandom. Just a year ago, Astro's Moon Bin, age 25, passed away in his Gangnam Seoul apartment. What I can tell you is that he too was struggling with mental health, which went ignored. The Gangnam police believe that he likely died by suicide. The mental health of K-pop idols is still being tested today as we speak. Now, you can imagine what it was like for Guhara. She had just lost probably the most precious thing in her life, her best friend. And unfortunately, due to work-related issues, she couldn't attend Sully's funeral. And this absolutely crushed her. So she went on Instagram to say her goodbyes and people have said the live is extremely devastating to watch. Now, I wish I could say that Guhara was able to move on. But on November 24th of 2019, just a month after the world said goodbye to Sully, they were again in shock that they had to say goodbye to Guhara. Now, Guhara struggles, well, they were in the public eye. In May, she was hospitalized for allegedly attempting to commit suicide once before, which deeply concerned her fans. She later apologized for all the commotion, all the concerns that she uh, created amongst her supporters. Now, despite her comeback performances in the weeks to follow, she was found deceased in her home. She had taken her own life in Seoul. The news brought attention to the issue of mental health within the entertainment industry. These tragic events shed light on the challenges faced by celebrities in the public eye and the toll that cyberbullying and the pressure to conform can take on their well-being. Now, South Korea has one of the highest suicide rates in the world. And the deaths of Gu Hara and Sully serve as a somber reminder of the urgent need to address mental health issues. In a significant move to address the issue of cyberbullying and protect victims, South Korea's National Assembly has introduced a new bill and proposed legislation known as Sully's Law, which aims to establish stringent regulations against malicious comments and cyberbullying. Sully's tragic death sparked conversations about the harsh realities of online harassment and the toll it takes on its victims. Dee Dee Riley would like to say a little something to Sully. And she writes here, To Sully, in your all too brief journey, you left an indelible mark on the hearts of many. Your spirit, courage, and unwavering determination to be yourself will forever be remembered. You stood up against the suffocating norms and expectations imposed on you, using your platform to challenge conventions and advocate for self-expression and i must say that is beautiful but before i let you guys go i would like to add a little something to this also now sully before she passed away she did express to the people that she cared about that she always wanted to be a mother okay so i could only say that i'm sorry sully that you couldn't live to see that dream because my son is my greatest gift and i wish that for you and every person that actually has a kind heart, you know, that they could experience that kind of love. So rest in peace, Sully. And may your soul find the happiness that eluded you in life. And that goes for all the beautiful people that we lost too soon. Because in this digital age where virtual connections reign supreme, the rise of bullying, cyberbullying has become an all too real epidemic. Now behind every headline, you know, lies an actual human being with real emotions. Never underestimate the consequences of online harassment. Take that with you if you ever find yourself doing it. Hey, we're all human. We're dumb sometimes. Now, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button since you made it this far. And now go protect the ones you love and love the ones that protect you. Better, yada yada. Now remember, these aren't just specific to uh, K-pop. 
uh, anybody in the South Korean celebrity list, <laughs> South Korean celebrity list, 